Hey, hey, girl. Today, very important topic. We're going to talk about how to balance hormones and lower your estrogen. And it's very important because, as you know, we and the girls have too high estrogen anyway. So it's good to know how we are contributing to it and what can we do to lower it naturally. There are also a lot of uh, other illnesses related to uh, hormonal disturbance and too high estrogen. So it's very good to know. Okay. The main, uh, so what is estrogen? It's the main female sex hormones, but it's present in everyone. So it means the men also got it. In females, estrogen plays a role in the menstrual cycle and reproductive system. And the males, it's important important for the sex function. Men also can have uh, estrogen uh, imbalances and too high estrogens. And like, for example, uh, they, they developing like men breast. <laughs> but let's focus on, on, on us on women. So is your estrogen too high? How would you know? Basically, there's some symptoms which are, are identical than the symptoms of endometriosis because endo is, uh, you know, illness where uh, the too high estrogen is the main factor. So it's irregular periods, spotting, heavy bleeding, bloating, fatigue, hair loss, headache, excess weight, cold hands and feet, memory problems. As you can see, all of them symptoms of endometriosis. We all have, you know, uh, heavy bleeding. We sometimes got the spotting between the periods. Our periods are irregular. Uh, bloating as well, uh, fatigue, hair loss, our hair is falling apart. Uh, we've got excess weight. Uh, we uh, uh, feeling that we've got some kind of memory um, problems like the brain fog. So all of these are symptoms of excess estrogen. Too high estrogen is not only linked to endometriosis, it's also linked to another uh, nasty illnesses. For example, polycystic ovary syndrome, blood clot, thyroid diseases, heart attack, breast cancer, ovarian cancer. So as you can see, so many so many illnesses. What can cause the estrogen dominance? Body imbalances causing production of too high is, uh, estrogen. It might also develop in response to medication. So some people are conditioned to uh, have a little bit higher estrogen than normal, but most likely we are actually contributing to our uh, to high estrogen by the things we're eating and by the things we are consuming. So uh, which kind of medication I'm talking about? Da -da 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 contraception pills. <laughs> I know a lot of doctors are prescribing the pill to uh, treat the heavy bleeding and the long periods and the pelvic pain. And uh, all these symptoms, as I mentioned before, they are already symptoms of too high estrogen. And stack more estrogen on top of the excess estrogen is just going to lead to the estrogen bomb. But you might say, Yola, but I'm on progesterone pill or progesterone uh, tablets or progesterone cream. So how is that contributing to my too high estrogen? Good question, girl. Good question. A hormonal birth control releases synthetic progesterone, which suppresses your natural progesterone production. And progesterone is very important because it balances uh, the effects uh, of the estrogen. And without uh, enough of the progesterone, you you end up with uh, symptoms of uh, too too high estrogen, and you're gonna develop estrogen dominance. So uh, now, when you're taking this artificial synthetic progesterone because it's not yours, is the one from the tablets, you might even feel better for a while. <laughs> you might think like you your period is um you might feel like um you you're feeling better you don't have a cramps you, you are just you know your period is lighter but the moment when you get off the pill girl that's going to be moment when your estrogen is going to jump up again and you have to face the true and reality and the consequences so many doctors um putting very young girls on the pill. And so many girls don't know how the uh, artificial contraception pills is actually messing with their hormonal uh, hormonal body, hormonal balance. They don't even know that it's going to take them sometimes months to uh, stabilize their hormonal level when they quit the pill. But I'm not saying this to make you feel bad about taking the pill. I used to do it too. And I know that many girls will do everything to get 
out of the pain because the pain let's face it is absolutely horrendous and no one should be facing pain like we do so i do acknowledge that you know we do everything to escape the pain and if you're on the pill to escape the pain it's absolutely fine just please promise me that you're going to put the, on your calendar at the end of the day when you stop taking it okay don't be one of those girls who are on the pills all their lives because i know many girls like this and they wake up one day thinking like you know how how come i develop so many other uh, you know health problems well this is because of the pill okay another one enzyme which uh, doctors are using to treat some medical or emotional disorders is phenothiazines is basically in all the medication if you're suffering for uh, depression so you might find it uh, there uh, you might find uh, that uh, consuming those things uh, is increasing your estrogen level which is red meat not only red meat though because it can be chicken as well for example dairy eggs and how is that uh, messing up with your estrogen? Uh, we are living in a very stupid society when everything is focused on mass production. So the farming is just industrialized. It's not like the farm, like I grew up in a farm in a small village in Poland, which we have one cow which was pregnant once, once in her lifetime and was grass fed but now it's totally different you know they're stuffing these poor animals with hormones because they want them to grow as quickly as possible maintaining as much uh, as much uh, body mass and as much muscles as possible so you will find all these hormones uh, which these animals are stuffed in for example all the beef all the chicken you know when they slaughter them the animals are releasing cortisol as well and who is consuming these hormones you if you eat meat you are consuming all these excess hormones all these grow hormones all these cortisols the animals release when they're dying you are literally all consuming this and the same with the dairy you know, we talk about um, like how the farming looks like and uh, how the dairy uh, dairy factories operate because this is the factories. The farming now is the like factories. You know, those poor cows are being impregnated uh, literally once after another. They don't have a breaks like the cows, which I remember, which is absolutely sad. And you need to know that the cow to produce milk, she has to be pregnant because mammals produce milk only when they are pregnant. And to, uh, you know, make them all the time like fertile and to keep them in this state of pregnancies of course these cows are all also injected with the hormones and we are all eating this the same the eggs from the chickens who's been you know artificially fed and you know injected to to grow quicker another contributors are the cosmetics girl the list goes on and on seriously Thousands of man-made products contain uh, xenoestrogens, which means that they mimic estrogen and disrupt your hormonal balance. There's a long list of chemicals that mimics the estrogen. And uh, I made the short list for the most common ones. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to remember them because I'm going to link them under this video. So uh, you will know which cosmetics, uh, which ingredients to check in your cosmetics and which one to avoid. Okay. Okay. So know your enemy, parabens. That's the big one. Parabens are in probably majority of the things we are using, like uh, in uh, uh, body lotions, they are in shampoos, they are in the conditioners, they are in you know the makeup removers manufacturer uh, use this well-known xanoestrogen as a pre uh, preservative so they are basically everyone um another one which you can uh, find in the plastic is fat phthalates you see i can't even pronounce it that means if you can't pronounce something it's so artificial that you should be avoiding it <laughs> but is uh, found in the plastic which means in the plastic bottles water bottles like this one that's why it's good to switch to the glass bottles instead so be careful with this 
things. Uh, triclosan. Manufacturers are using triclosan as an antibacterial agent. What that means? You're probably going to see them in hand wash and um, hand sanitizer. And now we've got the pandemic. So you probably used it 2,000 times. Researchers found that it measurably acts on estrogen receptors. For example, it's increased the size of uterine and grew breast cancer uh, cells in the rats. So that's absolutely disgusting if you ask me. I'm not telling you to be in your hand sanitizer. I'm telling you to be more mindful and, for example, buy hand sanitizers from the places like, I don't know, here in UK, we are blessed to have and Barrett, where I'm buying uh, half of my cosmetics because I switched. <laughs> I, I just literally binned half of my cosmetics I've been using because uh, I found uh, these bad ingredients absolutely everywhere. We've got the Benos uh, Fandons. This addictive alters estrogen and testosterone production. Most often you will find it in sunscreens. So if you're using sunscreen cream, you're probably going to find it there and it's messing with your uh, estrogen level levels. We've got BPA, which is uh, bisephanol, is the worst one. It's lower progesterone effects and bind and activate estrogen, uh, which is used in plastic bottles, uh, water bottles, uh, plastic bags, uh, plastic toys. So basically everything plastic probably contains this. Another big one, which was shocking for me because I love smell so much and I love my perfume perfume and a mask as well the most the most which is such a shame because i love the mask smell seriously everything that have a strong chemical or perfume smell is a good chance is messing with your hormones the exceptions in this um, are the uh, product uh, fragrance with essential oils, which can smell strong but won't disrupt your hormones. It's best to avoid product with fragrance on the ingredients list. So it means literally everything. I after. This video, girl, when you uh, check this um, sheets, which I'm going to provide uh, under the video, and when you go to, for example, to your bathroom and check the ingredients list, you will find out that majority of them got the fragrance on ingredients list. You know, all your shampoos probably got the fragrance. Uh, the big ones is herbal essences. All the shower gels got the fragrance on it. It's basically everywhere. Another one, phytoestrogens, they are mimicking natural body estrogen. And I put body instead of body, you know, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. But basically, phytoestrogens, they are uh, found in flax seeds, seeds, soya, bread, all the whole grains, rye, wheat, oats. And why is that? Because 80% of all um, wheat we are consuming are genetically modified. They are not the wheats and not the breads like my grandma used to know, you know, and this is such a shame because it's literally few generation gap you know, between my grandma and me. And everything is so contaminated and so destructive for us humans now, comparing the, you know, the old days. Soya is genetically modified. They are saying that over 80% of the soya, which is in the market, is already being uh, genetically modified because it just grows quicker, you know, and it's stuck with all the hormones. It's the same flax seeds and the same uh, with all grains, every single grains you know monsanto is the big one which got the monopoly of the grains industry just now and it's all full of absolutely horrible uh, horrible chemical things which are disturbing our hormonal uh, levels so this is the list which you have to pay attention i probably cannot even pronounce how the half of this <laughs> you probably won't be able to pronounce it too because how are you going to pronounce it phthalis propyl glycol you know hydroquidings triclosan uh, from the the most uh, the ones which are the most common are the parabens and SLS. You're probably going to find them in every uh, common um, 
shampoos and conditioners, like for example, Pantene Pro V, for example, Head and Shoulders, they are full of this shite. Uh, you're gonna find the heavy metals in some lipsticks. You're gonna find, for example, aluminum in antiperspirant. That's why I don't use antiperspirant and deodorants at all now. So I'm going to actually print this one. So don't you worry. You don't have to make a screenshot. This is going to be available for you. So what you can do, so many, you know, bad things, <laughs> so many bad things. But where there's the problems, there is solution more likely. And there is the ways, uh, there's the things which you can do to protect yourself from this hormonal imbalance. First one is the major one and the big one. Please synchronize with your rhythm. For those girls who uh, signed up to my um, um, online course by Hacking Endometriosis, there's whole module there about our uh, uh, superpowers because we women got two rhythms. We've got infradian and circadian. So I explain in depth how can you synchronize with your rhythm, like which foods to eat in which uh, phase of your cycle uh, which things to avoid when to exercise when to go on detox uh, when to expect your productivity peaks you know and how to literally biohack so all you you know all that so it's very important that you synchronize with your rhythms because if you want it will disturb your uh, hormonal symptoms uh, systems and you will experience all this horrible systems this symptoms you see <laughs> this is how it is when you are recording the video before your period exactly you know your your mind is producing words which your mind cannot which your mouth cannot pronounce sorry about this add the greens veggies and the cabbages this is another thing which you can do to help your body uh, metabolize excess estrogen it's very good for binding and clearing estrogens contains antioxidants that help protect your liver and the liver is so important because thanks to our liver uh, we are able to process uh, all the toxins and get rid of extra excess estrogen so which one the very uh, powerful uh, greens the broccoli cabbage cauliflower and kale they are the four go-to uh, ones the another one which are also good uh, with uh, lowering estrogen are the mushrooms and the red grapes so i put them on the list down there separately you can do another thing but please be like very realistic with with this like don't think oh my god such a long list now and i have to eliminate everything but we're going to talk about being realistic in the moment lose some weight because it's actually uh, the research shows that um too excess uh, weight contributes to production of est extra estrogen the fat cells produce ex extra estrogen so the moment when you lose weight the estrogen level should be going down and how to lose weight for those who signed up for uh, my online course you know how to uh, biohack to uh, lose some weight uh, how to biohack with ketosis so you know all of this okay and for those who don't know and who didn't sign up please do it's just 35 pounds and it's just literally going to change your life and change the way how you see your body and how you work with your body okay so another thing which you can do is to reduce stress because the cortisol alters blood sugar metabolism this increases the glucose and insulin and then this one leads to inflammation which leads to obesity which leads to to extra um, estrogen and estrogen dominance so as you can see it's like never ending bloody cycle <laughs> and another thing filter your water i mentioned to you that the plastic bottles everything which comes in the plastic bottles is absolutely no go to zone because it contains uh, so much estrogen but the bad thing is that um they also found 45 hormone disturbing chemicals in public drinking water so where is the solution you, you know the tap water is contaminated with um, you know hormone disturbing chemicals and the, the the water which is good is comes with a plastic bottles which disturb our estrogen like where is the solution the solution is the filter water 
and I know it's not ideal because the filter water is expensive, but I'm seriously considering buying the filter and a filter machine and just filter my tap water because it's very difficult to find the tap water which comes in the glass bottles. It's extremely difficult. And, you know, not all of us are blessed to live in the region which we got the access to clear water like for example uh, the people who are living next to the mountains they've got the better water and we like in the cities we've got just the shitty water so the estrogen chemicals in plastic bottles uh, leak to uh, to the water and they contaminate it so guys filter your water this is the best thing we can do and swap your cosmetics as i said imagine if for example you as a small girl you start using the cosmetics which are full of parabens which are full of uh, horrible you know uh, chemicals and you keep using this makeup until you are like age of 40. you're gonna you're gonna have such a hormonal imbalances is just unreal it's the same like when you're using the same cosmetics all over again because they are your favorite and you just love them it, if they actually uh, have this uh, bad ingredients on the list which you're going to check after this video it's very likely that you're contributing to your excess estrogen so please swap swaps from time to time i know that not everyone can afford to buy uh, the clean beauty so-called clean beauty which you can buy in any uh, like health shops here in uk we've got so many good health shops so switch your product as you run out, swap one thing a month or, you know, do like total, total refurbishment of your beauty products. But be realistic with this. And what I mean, be realistic, you know yourself. Like, for example, I know that I love perfumes, so I'm not going to give up all the perfumes. I, I don't want to give up perfumes because I just love them. But I know myself and I thought to myself, like, okay, Yola, we have to give up something because otherwise we're going to overload all, our body with all this es excess estrogen. And why? Why would you do that? You know, our goal is to get healthy so what i did i eliminate all the deodorants i don't use any deodorants at all and uh, not in the spray not uh, antiperspirants at all uh, i swap the uh, nail polish for the the good one the the one which doesn't uh, contain any horrible things so these nails are actually uh, not only halal because i'm using halal also brands they are very hard to find but i'm telling you the the quality is absolutely amazing because they care about the chemicals as well so if you see any good products beauty products please let me know uh, i swap I, I literally been most of the the things. Well, I used them. I didn't been them, but the moment when I used them, that was the moment when I said goodbye. So I said goodbye to uh, my usual uh, shampoos, which uh, contain all the parabens and SLS. So um, on my hair products, I'm using just the soap bars, uh, which you can get from the Body Shop here in UK. Body Shop very have very, very good range of very good uh, cosmetics, uh, which are, you know, uh, hormone friendly. <laughs> so I recommend if you're blessed to live here and have a choice. If you are living somewhere else, it's going to be tough, girl. It's going to be bloody tough, you know, because majority of the cheaper products are actually full of this hormonal shite and sometimes i feel like this is like never-ending battle of our health like they, they are trying from every single side they are trying to make us uh, sick and we just have to protect ourselves as much as we can but be realistic you know uh, don't throw out everything just be realistic okay i can make uh, sacrifices here like for example i'm not gonna use this uh, hand gel or i will swap the sunscreen if i'm using every single day because it's gonna build up so i'm gonna use the the one which is uh, more natural so be realistic okay and just do your best 
just do your best. I hope this video helped. <laughs> I'm very sorry that uh, if I'm talking, I'm like, uh, uh, because I'm recording this in my menstrual face, which I've got a problem with communication, as you all know which is natural in this phase. So I'm very sorry for all this, but I hope this video helped. Uh, please share it with everyone because this is something what every single girl should know. All the food which we are consuming, high of estrogen, all the cosmetics, you know, all the uh, bad ingredients. Please let every girl know because it's something which uh, we should know that and we can help our body. We can help our body by eliminating some of the things. Actually, the uh, science uh, and um, that was the research which said uh, and concluded that modern human is facing 80,000 of uh, different chemicals each and every single day. 80,000, 80,000. This is insane. We as humans, we are not built to be like this and we are not meant to be like this you know we are not meant to live like this i hope this video helped please share it with everyone and good luck with eliminating please let me know how it goes let me know in how many cosmetics did you find these ingredients and how is your detoxification from all the excess estrogen is going